For a quarter of a century now, we've been hearing declarations by politicians, business leaders, thought leaders that what we need is a green economy, a circular economy. But instead, we are still hurtling into climate breakdown, increasing intensity of storms and cyclones, floods and drought, increasing wildfires, rampant deforestation. Why is this happening? I think this is because we have paid too little attention to who actually drives the economy. These are not isolated problems that I describe here. There's a pattern. They are driven by the impacts of economic activity. And two thirds of the economy is private sector. In the US, it is actually three fourths in terms of GDP and jobs. The main driver in the private sector is the large multinational corporation. So the question that begs to be asked is, can today's corporation deliver tomorrow's economy? Let's look at it. What do we have today? What I call Corporation 1920, the old style corporation, which is in pursuit of size because volumes have to be increased for profits to be increased. It's the big and beautiful multinational corporation model. They are international arbitrages par excellence. They arbitrage cheap resources from where licenses are easiest, like Africa, skilled labor where it is the cheapest, India, Bangladesh, manufacturing subsidies from wherever they're available, Malaysia, Korea, India, and of course, consumer demand from where it is richest, USA, Europe, the BRICS countries, high net worth individuals. They are also excellent lobbyists. Lobbying has been used to obfuscate reality for decades on end. For example, fossil fuels and climate change denial, four decades of denial. For example, leaded gasoline's health impacts, six decades of denial, even though this had been researched and established at Yale and Harvard in the 1920s. Another feature is unlimited leverage. We have been ignoring lessons from four major recessions which were driven by the excessive leverage, misused leverage, including the Asian debt crisis and the mortgage derivative crisis of 2008. A company's ability to leverage without limits creates companies that are too big to fail, as they call it. And today, it's not just banks that are too big to fail. You need banks to survive for clearing and settlement. But today, we have car makers which are too big to fail, like General Motors, insurance companies like AIG, and even airlines, which we are talking about now, thanks to the COVID crisis and, and its recession. And of course, how can I forget too big to fail hedge funds, would you believe, like LTCM? Whatever happened to this concept that markets are meant to punish the misallocation of capital? The fourth feature is unethical advertising, a 24 by 7 barrage of persuasion, half-truths and lies, which essentially convert human insecurities into wants, wants into needs, needs into demand, demand into production and profits. Advertising executives will tell you that, oh, we are ethically neutral. I don't understand what that means. You can either, in my opinion, be either ethical or unethical. All of this leads to the negative externalities of the private sector, which are huge, and we'll talk about that. But let's first look at what's the alternative. There is an alternative. It's called Corporation 2020, a goal-aligned business, a business whose a part of a stakeholder capitalist world and not just a shareholder capitalist world. It was Henry Ford himself who said that a business that makes nothing but money is a poor business. Recently, the US Business Roundtable, a group of leading corporate uh, uh, executives at its last summit, redefined its purpose of the corporation to being as pushing an economy that serves all citizens. And this theme was mirrored also at the World Economic Forum in Davos this year. So we can have corporations which are also custodians of natural capital. They exercise care, they measure and reduce negative environmental impacts, they minimize damage to natural capital. We can have corporations which are builders of community, communities of employees, suppliers, customers, and even competitors. And once one such community has been built 1.5 million housewives by a company called Natura in Brazil, basically a leading cosmetics and personal products maker which sells through these housewives. We can have companies which are builders of human capital, institutes like Infosys, hiring and training 30,000 young people every year in its campus in Mysore. It's an example of a human capital factory. There are many like this in India, generating billions of dollars of positive externalities, skilled professionals taking their new skills, learning and their brand, and basically adding value to themselves and to society around the world. How do we get from Corporation 1920 to Corporation 2020? I have a theory of change that's been developed and worked upon by my colleagues at GIST, myself, and many others. It's a complex problem, so it will need complex solutions. There are actually four layers to the problem, excessive demand, 
underpriced supply, resource depletion, and losses in public capital. And these are all at the macro level, at the economy-wide level. But if you notice, these are being driven by the micro level, in other words, the corporation level, because it is the marketing and advertising of corporations that is driving excessive demand, the leverage without limits of corporations, and also the lack of pricing of resources properly, which is driving underpriced supply. And of course, underpriced resources also lead to resource depletion. Then we have externalized costs leading to underpriced supply as well as public capital losses. All of these micro-level problems, however, do have micro-level solutions as well. For instance, in terms of marketing and advertising, advertising accountability can be achieved. Look at the European Cosmetics Association, which has rules and regulations against the use of sex or children in its advertising. Leverage can be contained through capital limits and indeed through consortium limits as we've had in India. Resource taxations can be used. Look at Norway. They've had a resource tax on oil extraction, basically a 79% resource tax. And despite that, oil companies still use their, their oil fields. And finally, we can measure and disclose externalities. And that's what I'm going to describe to you how. This is a big problem. Corporate externalities are the biggest free lunch in human history. People like Trucost and my company just have measured and valued them. And the answer is in trillions of dollars, seven to $11 trillion for primary sector and for the entire corporate sectors. However, today's externalities are tomorrow's risks and day after tomorrow's losses. And this is why I'm optimistic. Corporate C-suite executives should realize this and investors are beginning to realize this. However, everyone is searching for information, searching for impact information, and they don't have it. You cannot manage what you do not measure. The C-suite should care about this intensely, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it's good for the company. Because if you manage your su supplies carefully and reduce energy use and reduce resource use, you will reduce costs. If you source your resources and supplies from where it's safe for society, where you're not going to get bans imposed or, or carbon taxes or pollution taxes imposed, then you will reduce risk. Today's risk is tomorrow's costs. If you develop sustainability as a core theme in your company, you will create a culture of innovation as young people will step up and they will try to find innovative solutions for products and for processes. And finally, you will improve brand value. And all of this will lead to you being listed amongst the potential equities and, and which can be purchased by ESG funds and by SRI funds, socially responsible investments. So there are benefits to being sustainable and getting there is something that investors do care about. If we look at this graph out here, you'll see that the volume of debt and equity assets that have been examined and filtered through some lens of sustainability or the other over the last decade has increased from 13 trillion in 2012 all the way to 30 trillion in 2018. And I believe now the number is going to be 45 trillion. We do need to start, however, measuring corporate impacts to be able to inform the corporation and to inform the investor. And this is also possible. It's a question of broadening the landscape which we measure. Today, we just measure produced capital, basically factories, buildings, cash, and the value of those assets to our shareholders. And we report IFRS style year by year. But we are just measuring produced capital in private ownership. We are not even measuring produced capital owned by communities, which we help create through CSR programs, or produced capital which we use, which is public, roads and bridges. And we are certainly not measuring human capital that can be created and used. And we are definitely not measuring natural capital impacts. And what binds it all together, social capital, the rules and regulations, the institutions and society, our impact on those, no measurement. This is the problem. We need to start measuring the entire landscape of capitals for performance to be measured properly. And this can be done. Here's an example done by my company, a so-called impact weighted account or an integrated profit and lot account showing the impacts along the four capital classes aggregating them and then also showing how it compares with their competitors essentially doing a survey of competitors and also breaking up these impacts into the 17 sdgs showing to what extent which sdg is going to be hurt or aided by the actions of your company if all this is possible and it's happening why doesn't it scale why can't we speed this up my friends, that's because we need a movement for this. We need you and companies and executives to band up and basically push for change. And the change will have to be in regulations and awareness both. This change will enable Corporation 2020 to be seen as the greater value generator to society, to be seen as the company that truly performs. Corporation 2020 then will become the dominant model, not the old style Corporation 1920. And that in turn 
will give us the green and equitable economy of permanence.